Now let's look at this example. You have the graph constant velocity, decreasing velocity, increasing velocity, A, B, C, D. Find the acceleration of the first four seconds. So the acceleration of the first four seconds. First four seconds. Acceleration comes from what? Acceleration is your gradient. Gradient for the first AB is how much? Zero. So there is no gradient. B, the acceleration from 4 seconds to 6 seconds. The acceleration from 4 seconds to 6 seconds, the acceleration is your gradient. And your gradient for this line is this over this, negative, it's a negative gradient. So your y-axis is 4, your x-axis is 2, 4 to 6 is 2, correct? This is 4, this is 2, so it is negative 2 meter per second square deceleration so if they ask for acceleration you say acceleration is negative but if they ask for deceleration then you say deceleration is 2 ms minus 2 that is deceleration and average speed to find the average speed you have to find the total distance divided by the total time taken now the total distance Clearly, you can separate this into two diagrams. One is a trapezium and one is a triangle. All right? The trapezium has the base of how much? 6. A to B is 4. The height is 4. So this area is how much? This area is half times height times 4 plus 6, which is, cancel off, 2. 10 plus 10 times 2, 20. And what about this? The base is how much? 6 to 10, 4. The height is how much? 4. So this area is a triangle, half times base times height. This is 8. So what is the total distance? Your total distance is you add up both together. My total distance, the average speed, the average speed will be Total distance, add up these two together, divided by total time. Look at my finger. What is the time taken? The total time is 10 seconds. 10 seconds. This is meter per second. And this is, uh, sorry, this is meter. This is second. So 28 over 10, 2.8 meter per second. All right? So that will be the graph. And finally, the graph on acceleration, okay? Graph on acceleration versus time. Now, in acceleration versus time, acceleration versus time say like this. The gradient does not give you any physical quantity. Why? If you look at a gradient, no doubt that the gradient is a positive constant gradient. But According to the definition of gradient, it's always the y-axis divided by the x-axis. Now, what does acceleration divided by time represent? Acceleration divided by time does not give you any physical quantities. We have three physical quantities in motion, speed, distance, and acceleration. All right? So, there is no physical quantity. So, for this, you can only explain the acceleration is increasing uniformly. So the acceleration is increasing uniformly. Can you follow? Increasing uniformly. However, the area will give you something. What does the area give you? Now, very simple. I'm going to let the area, the base, this is a triangle, for example. This is, say, uh, uh, say this is the uh, p second, all right, and the height here is q acceleration meter per second square. Now, what does the area gives you? This is a triangle. Let's explore further. Half times base times height. Now, if you were to look at the unit, if you were to look at the unit, this p is in seconds. This Q is in meter per second square. Can you tell me second times meter per second square gives you what? M 
ms minus 1. So what does ms minus 1 represent? Velocity. So in short, the area under the graph for acceleration versus time will be velocity. Can you follow? So you don't memorize. Physics is not a memory subject. Physics is analyzing from what you can see. Can you follow? Right? So now, let's look at this. We would like to give you, say for example, okay, for example, velocity time. I have a line going up a constant velocity and a line going down. Look at the steepness, it's different steepness. You have T1, T2 and T3. Okay, we would like you to analyze the graph of the acceleration versus time. Okay, we want to transfer the graph of this velocity time into acceleration time. Now look very carefully. Always look at what? The gradient. What does the gradient represent? Okay, now first of all, you are going to have uh, two T1, T2, and T3 is a shorter one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is that you just invent, you just uh, put your own value here. You know that this is not so steep. This is very steep. So say the gradient is say 8. This one, is it very steep? Yes. Say the gradient is very, very steep. Say 15, but negative 15. What is the gradient here? This is confirm zero. You don't have to say anything, right? This is confirmed zero. So with that, we will be able to draw the graph. Now watch. Sketch the graph, not draw the graph. So just now, I told you that this is going to be a reference line. You see, 8. You don't show. You just write down 8 very, very lightly. 0. Negative 15. It's very, very down. All right? Then after that, this is constant 8, constant 8, dotted, next, 0, next, negative 15, so immediately it drops to negative 15, it drops to negative 15, can you follow? So this is the graph, all right? Now, if I give you like this, going down like this, velocity, time, from 8, 0, this is, uh, say, uh, 2 seconds, and this is, again, negative 8, okay? I want you to sketch velocity acceleration time graph. Acceleration time graph. Now look carefully. This part, the gradient gives you what? Your gradient is 4 divided by 8. It's a negative gradient, negative 4. Confirm, it's a positive direction. That means it is a deceleration, negative 4. So negative 4. So from 2, you get negative 4. Right? What about after that? Continue. Until 4 seconds. And then what is this gradient? This gradient is again. This gradient is again negative. Right? 8 divided by 2. 8 divided by 2 is a negative gradient. Negative 4 also. And this is a negative 4 also, but this part shows deceleration. But this part 
from here to here shows acceleration. But in opposite direction. Okay, so it's totally different. All right.